Betty? Elizabeth? Is that you? It's snowing. I feel like I'm slowly constructing Betty. Like once I find all the pieces of her clothing, she's going to come alive. Are you upstairs? Betty, I'm coming. Betty? Betty? Are you in there? Open the door! I'm coming in! Stand away from the door! Before, though? Why is their body suddenly here? You said this was a gift from another unlucky suitor. He knows the lighter is precious to Elizabeth, an object of sentimental value. But he would not, he believes, have left this lighter here by accident. It was precious to you. You wouldn't have left it here unless... A signpost. A breadcrumb. But what's so important about the Fretlands? I will figure this out. I will find you, I promise. It's from Johan, addressed to his wife. This is the work of a man in great distress, he thinks. A man at his wit's end. Did you notice the handwriting, Betty? It was clearly distraught. Knock, ere knock. Enough is enough. After decades of strife, I pray that God will... Till ye, forgive me. I am tired of secrets. For twenty years I have kept my silence about our discovery, but my silence has only led to misfortune, and my cowardice has only led to death. I will make Frederick pay for what he has done to us, for what they have done to our Ruth. When it is over, I will let the ocean take me to you and Ruth. May God forgive me. Anna was already dead when he wrote this. He had no one else to confess to. What now, Betty? Johann went to confront his brother, probably at Frederick's farm. And then? You followed Johann to Frederick Fretland's farm, and then to the mine. Johann went to his brother's farm, and Edward fears Betty would have followed. You wouldn't let this go, Betty. You'd follow your story to the end. All the way to the end. I feel so empty here without Lissy. Did you go to the mine, Betty? Is that what you're trying to tell me? So 
So where is Frederick's farm? Press to talk to Betty. We're trying to talk to Betty now. They don't speak to us, though. The gate. Frederick's warning. The path leads to his farm. <laughs> Lizzie was right. We are going to jump it. Guess you win those clams, Lissy. Fretland, at the heart of it all, are the two brothers equal but separate. Johan and Frederick are partners, and on good terms. But something happens in the mine. Disagreements lead to a falling out. And at the end of it all, 20 years later, Johan walks this path to confront Frederick. Was this your doing, Johan? Did you burn your brother's farm to the ground? And where were you, Betty? Did you witness their fall? opened was the password Simon's grave. Born December 5th, 1909, died September 17th, 1923. The safe. Frederick would choose numbers that meant something to him. Why bury Simon here and not at the cemetery? If the village blamed him for Ruth's death, your imagination, Betty. You'd figure this out in no time. Simon's birthday. Ah. Another Viking artifact, Betty. Most likely from the same treasure Ruth found.
postmarked in Boston. That's a, a curious coincidence. Dear Frederick, I hope this letter, it's in English, Betty. Hope this letter finds you and the boy in good health. We're concerned about you both. Uh, no word from you for almost two years now. Hmm. All of us still heartbroken about Margaret's passing. We know things have been difficult for you and Simon. Hmm. It's in English, Betty. Are they... Are they talking to Betty basically just to themselves? Because, you know, before they were sort of talking to themselves when they were talking with Lissy, but now they're talking to Betty, but Betty doesn't really answer? Or just not hearing the answers? Which, I, now I don't think there's any answers being given. I almost wonder if they're talking to me, the player. I don't know. Exactly. Mr. Fretland, we expect you to take care of this problem. If the discovery is made public, the authorities will intervene and the mine will be shut down. Should this happen, we will consider it a breach of our contract and we will withdraw our investment. You and your brother will be responsible for all debts and losses. Johan must be convinced to wall up the chamber. We have already dealt with the worker who made the discovery. So they did discover something in the mines. Something very, very bad. The Fretland Mining Company. I wonder what this unlocks. The mine? What else? You went to the mine. I hope our guardian angel watched over you. All right, Betty. So what happens next in your story? Johan and Frederick discover something in the mine. A cave or chamber of archaeological value. They argue about what to do. If the discovery is made public, it's the end of their enterprise. Johan is convinced or paid to walk away their secret stays hidden then a few months later the accident three men die the investors pull out the mine shuts down frederick's up to his neck in debt Cursed mine in Grovik. Locals struggle with bad crops and livestock deaths and blame it on... They thought they were cursed because of the mine. A thing like that becomes self-fulfilling. If you believe you're cursed, every misfortune feeds the delusion. So, 20 years pass. The Frontland feud tears the village apart, setting neighbor against neighbor. And then, Ruth stumbles across the secret in the mine. After all this time, the truth may finally come to light, but she dies. And the day after, Simon is murdered. It's a catalyst. Old grievances resurface. No matter who you stand with, you're a traitor. Things escalate. More people die. From disease, despair, suicides, murder.
because of the mine. Because of what they found there. And what they covered up. There was no one to stop it, Betty. They were alone. That's the real curse of Grovik. Isolation. This place is cursed. Ridiculous. Oh, there's the doll's head. <laughs> I get the feeling Edward is going to find that the curse is real. Ruth was here the day she fell. Something spooked her, and then she ran all the way to the cliff where... Do you know what happened, Betty? Did you witness it? Hold on. The key, I'm sure, unlocks that door, but is there something over this way? Like, what's that? The marker. sure I'm just gonna continue though hello Betty are you in there please answer me oh Edward this is super cursed <laughs> at least get a light I guess that'll do. unless you left it here for a reason what am I not seeing this is a hole into the chamber that they found Ooh, that looks like it's about to break yeah, old mines are super dangerous to explore. What? What's happening? I can't move. What the hell? Wait a minute. Oh, did my controller die? Oh shit, I think my controller died. Hold on, it's coming back. It came back. The batteries probably need to be changed. No, it died again. I'm going to keyboard. Switching ah. over to keyboard so I don't die. <laughs> Edward! Edward! Mm -hmm. Elizabeth? Is that... Is that you? Edward? Where are you? Okay, let me go change the batteries real fast. I'm on my way, Betty. Wait for me. I'm 
on my way. I'm here, Betty. It's Edward. It's me. Th Wait, this is the thing that's still marked? The safe? Why? Oh, weird. I think it's bugged. There's nothing in there. idea how long I've been looking for you. you you had me so worried I I I it's her he knows it's Betty he knows her so well her scarf her hat her gloves it's all there she's all there look your brooch mother's brooch you must have lost it at the mine. Let me put it on for you, Betty. I wouldn't want you to lose it again. No. She's been dead for 30 years, Edward. Elizabeth was never here. But we didn't come for her. We came for Johan, and Anna, and Frederick, and Simon, and... and Ruth. We're here to tell their stories. No. Elizabeth. She's here. I... You know Betty died when she was a baby. She drowned in the pond and you found her you were just 11 you carried her to your mother and your mother she hated you for that she could never forgive you for bringing her baby to her and you could never forgive yourself for what she did after you always forget this because you don't want to be alone. So you bring Betty back, again and again, to New York, to Boston, to the house. But always just out of reach, never quite there. The scent of her, the echo of her, but never really her. All it does is make you lonelier. But the thing is, Edward, you're never alone. You have us. And you'll always have us. Betty's... She was never there for you. She couldn't be. You can't lose us. We're a part of you. Forever. And ever. And ever. But you need to let Betty go now. There's not room for all of us in there. I couldn't save you, Elizabeth. I'm so sorry. Mm. 
It is as painful to wake from a vision as it is to be born anew. Is Lissy back? Are you here, Lissy? Yeah. Ah. <sighs> that is so comforting. I was feeling some real crushing loneliness after all that. If Lissy wasn't here, God, I would feel so lonely myself. How am I looking? Yet? I might be weaned off the stuff. Boo. Don't lose your taste for tea, old fruit. It keeps you human. We have unfinished business. We do? The final piece of the puzzle. Ruth. Come on. Let's go back to where it started. We have an appointment with a ghost. Such an amazing view, isn't it? And the air. Ugh. Boy, that sure is something. What did you want to show me? Come sit down. we come here, Teddy? To Grovik. Well... What if he thinks the answer is simple and logical? A conversation in a public place, a name subconsciously registered. Or he was drawn here as though this place has an ethereal weight to it. Elizabeth may be a specter, he thinks, but she still holds power over me. Let's go with the ethereal weight. Some places have gravity. What are you saying? Gravewick's gravity pulled us across the Atlantic Ocean? Grovik. No, I'm not saying that. That's irrational. But you believe it, don't you? That we were summoned to tell their story. to find my sister. But Betty's not. She was never here. It doesn't make sense. The letter to Frederick. The one you found in his safe. From Boston. I may have overheard a conversation somewhere, paid it no attention, but the name stuck. And Betty... And I spun a story around it that put us on this path. Do you really believe that? I mean, how often are you around people? I'm a man of science. I don't know what to believe. And yet, here we are. All three of us. Is this what you wanted to show me? I wanted to be close to her. Do you believe in ghosts, Edward? You know I don't. Well, you've been chasing one for years. That's different. What about me? Us? You're not ghosts. You're alive. Fair enough. 
So what really happened to Ruth? So much miseries and tropic, he knows. Chance events that cascade into an accidental avalanche that destroys people. I believe it was an accident. How? What happened? Your guess is as good as mine. All right, she ran from the mine and came here. And then, was she afraid? What made her run? The girl ran from something, from someone. He still believes this, because the alternative... Something spooked her. And she panicked. So she ran here. Why not home? She couldn't go home. Or she didn't want to. She felt safe here. This was her happy place. And then... <sighs> If only Ruth had wings, like an angel, she could have flown straight to heaven. I hope she's at peace, and with God. Do you think that's where everyone's gone? He has no faith in an afterlife. He saw into his mother's dead eyes, he saw the gunshot wound in his father's head, and he knew even then that heaven was a lie. They're dead. I don't believe there's anything more to it than that. But there's comfort in oblivion, and we won't be alone. We'll never know what happened to everyone in Grovik. We tried our best. We'll remember them. All of them. Maybe that will give them some peace and oblivion. Could this be your book, Edward? The one you've been wanting to write? A story about people who are isolated, left behind by the world. You can give them all a proper ending, with no annoying loose threads. Edward, is that- Our boat, but how? Who cares? Let's catch it before it sets out on another adventure. I don't understand how this can be. I keep telling you, ghosts. Ghosts took the boat, ghosts brought it back. It must have been the wind. Whatever helps you sleep at night, teddy bear. Let's blouse, while the weather's still good. I need my suitcase. So get a wiggle on, old boy. I'm going to say my goodbyes to all the things. I don't think we'll be back. Meet you at the house. <laughs> My goodness. Ah, righty ho. No rush. We have all day. I think the game is actually ending. In a really interesting way. Lucy was talking about how when we write the book, there'll be no annoying loose ends. But I guess the reality is just... Just that we don't really know exactly what happened. Teddy, pack your things. I'll meet you by the boat. Do you never sit still? Don't be a wet blanket. Let's make like the wind and get out of here. I'm still expecting some something bad to happen. Beautiful look at this place. I 
was a nice choice to cut till we're right of the boat. Come on, let's go. Row, Teddy, row. still cold it's a fjord lissy and it's almost winter there will be snow when we get back to hanover the house will be warm are we going to be all right edward i think so Let's finish up with some thoughts on Draugen. I am very taken by surprise. I mean, going into it, what I expected was something kind of like Dreamfall Chapters, because that's the previous games that they've made. I was expecting something that had a lot of horror, a lot of adventuring stuff, some puzzles. I, I kind of expected it to be just what it looks like on the surface, but it's not at all. I wasn't even sure if it was going to end then, or if that was just the midway through the game. I, it kind of felt like it could have been just the middle part and we were about to go into the second half, but then it ended. Which is really surprising, but it didn't do it in a way that makes me feel like, oh, they like ran out of time or something and then just left the game kind of incomplete and it feels weird. No, it felt like that's an appropriate place to end, I just wasn't expecting it at all. Still just trying to think of what the heck happened in Grovik. I guess we know almost everything that we need to know, don't we? I know enough of the basics that we kind of get the picture. I guess it's still up to us just to wonder whether there is actually a curse at all. Or if the whole thing is just a bunch of accidents and superstition culminating in distrust and discord and maybe murder. And suicides. I'm not exactly sure. I suspect that it was just that, though, and that there isn't actually a real curse. I don't know. And I'm still not sure what Lissy and the entity, the statue thing, the things that referred to them as us, we, like a group, I'm still not sure if they're just basically a construct, just Edward talking to himself, or if there's something more there. I can't quite tell. At first it felt like the game was about finding Betty, because that's ostensibly the premise to the whole thing. We're going to this island to look for Betty. And then it quickly becomes apparent that Lissy is not real, and I suspected Betty wasn't real, although I wasn't sure. Things just start feeling more and more unreal. And then it seemed like it wasn't about Betty at all, but about the people on the island and their stories. But then we couldn't even get a definitive answer on that. So then it goes back to feeling like it's more about Edward, really. Almost entirely about Edward. And them coming to terms with everything. I'm left feeling a bit... I don't know how I feel, honestly. A bit confused. I enjoyed it quite a bit. It just... It kept changing what I thought it was about, and then at the end, it's... I, I don't feel like I necessarily understood it, really. I'm just a little bit confused. It's a strange game, and not at all what I expected, and I kind of like that. And I love the voice acting. I loved all the small touches of, like, backing away from the piano. You could hear the little, uh, little stool scratch on the floor. 
if you looked away from Lissy when she was trying to talk directly at you with something serious, then she would say like, hey, look at me when I'm talking to you. Because of course that's rude. I just, you know, being a game, it's not something I normally think about. But that was a nice little touch. It looked beautiful too. Well, I think that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed watching my playthrough of Draugen. Thank you.